Welcome back, this is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel and I'm going to be going over the S1 statistics paper from October 2022 from um, Pearson's Edexcel examining board and this, this uh, paper I'm going to go through each question as I normally do one by one starting off with question number one and save them as separate videos so I can save them in a playlist, one with the paper, this particular paper and one with the topic so the first question in this paper is about this grouped frequency table. It says the stem lengths of a sample of 120 tulips are recorded in the grouped frequency table below. So you've got the stem lengths, frequencies. It says a histogram is drawn to represent these data. And the area of the bar representing the 40 to 42 class is 16.5 square centimeters. Okay, so the, this, this 40 to 42 um, bar, the area representing that bar is 16.5 centimeters squared. We've got to calculate the exact area of the bar representing the 42 to 45 class. Okay, so we know in histograms, it's the area of the bar which is proportional to the frequency. So these frequencies have to be in proportion to each other. So the area of this bar, as I said, is 16.5 square centimeters. And we got to find what the area of this bar is. Okay, so we know that they must be in proportion to each other, so it's pretty simple. I can say that the, uh, the area or that we need, okay, has to be representing 18, um, 18 tulips. And the area that we know for the first bar, which is 16.5 centimeters squared, is representing 12 tulips so we, we want them to be in proportion so we can say a is equal to 16.5 multiplied by 18 divided by 12 that's the proportion that this should rep the area should be higher by that proportion okay because the frequency is um is represented by the area of the bar okay not by the height of the bar okay so it's proportional to the area of the bar it's not equal to the area it's proportional to the area so we do 16.5 multiplied by 18 over 12. And that will give us our answer, which is 24.75 um, 24 square centimeters. So there's the answer to part A, the exact area of the bar representing the 42 to 45 class. Okay, the second question, part B, says the height of the tallest bar in the histogram is 10 centimeters. Find the exact height of the second tallest bar. Now the height of the bars is is determined by the frequency density. So to find the frequency density, we've got to take the frequencies and divide them by the stem length. So let's do that and see which one will have the highest frequency density. The one with the highest frequency density will be the one which has the highest, you know, height. It will be the highest uh, height. The frequency density is representing the height of the bar. Okay, so here we have 12. The frequency density is the frequency divided by the bar width. Now here, there's no gaps in the limits. So, um, you know, those are the width of the limits exactly as you can see from the numbers here. If there were gaps in the limits, then you'd have to uh, compensate by uh, adding 0.5 to the beginning and the end. But in this case, no problem. 40 to 42, 40 to 50, so that's fine. No gaps in the limits. So you do 12 divided by 2, which is 6. 18 divided by 3, which is also 6. 23 divided by 5. Okay, 23 divided by 5, which gives us 4.6. Okay, and then we have 35 divided by 5, which is 7. Um, is that right? 35 divided by 5. Yeah, then you've got 24 divided by 3, which is 8. And we have 8 divided by 2, which is 4. So the highest bar is this. That's the highest bar, and this is the second highest bar. Okay. So it says the highest, the height of the tallest bar is 8 centimeters. So the 55 to 58 is the tallest. And the next tallest is the 50 to 55. Okay, so what we can say is that that frequency density of 8 is represented by 10 centimeters. And we want to know how many centimeters is going to represent 7, a frequency density of 7. So we can, uh, again, use proportion here. We say 10 times 7 divided by 8, and that will give us our answer, 
10 times 7 over 8. So again, it's some sort of proportion here. And that gives us 35 over 4, which is 8.75 centimeters. So there's a height of the, the exact height of the second tallest bar. So we've got the height of the, the area of the, the um, bar that they wanted us to find by using proportion. And we also got the height of the t second tallest bar by, again, using proportion. But we have to understand that it's a frequency density that determines the height of the bar, not the frequency. Okay, not the frequency, the frequency density. So if we went by the frequencies, we'd, we might think this is the highest bar, but it's not. All right, that's important for us to understand. Right, so there's um, the answer for 1A and B. Now we're going to go on to 1C. So for 1C it says Q1 for these data is 45. That means the lower quartile. Use linear interpolation to find an estimate for Q2 and the interquartile range. All right, so we need to find what Q2 is. All right, now Q2 is the, um, what's it called, the, uh, the median, the middle quartile, right? So we need to know, first of all, we, I think they told us how many there. There's 120 tulips. So Q2 is a middle term when they are arranged in order of size. So there's 120 tulips. So we divide that by 2. That gives us 60. Now, as we are not, uh, we don't have exact data. It's group data. We don't have to say, okay, the 60th and the 61st term. We don't have to do that because we don't know the exact values. It's group data. All right. So we're just going to stick with the 60. We're looking for the 60th, 60th position, the entry that's in the 60th position. All right. So we're going to find first which group it lies in. Okay. Now the 60th position lies in the group. If we do the cumulative frequency here, we've got 12 plus 18 is 30. 30 plus 23 is 53. Plus 35, that's going to give me 88. So it's going to be in this group. Okay, so we know that Q2 is in this group. Okay, so we know Q2 is in that group. So what I like to do for linear interpolation, interpolation is as follows. I'm going to make a, a line representing that particular group. And the beginning of the group is 50 in terms of its um, value. And so the end of the group is 55. Okay, and we're looking for Q2. Okay, we're looking for the term which is the 60th term. We know that at the, the 60th term, at the beginning of that group, we're on the 53rd term. By the end of the group, we're on the 88th term. Okay, so we're looking for this value of Q2, which represents the 60th term. Okay, so what we can do is we can use proportion. Again, it's all proportion, this question. Because, okay, Q2 is this much into the group. Okay, so it's going to be 50 plus, it's going to be more than 50, and the proportion that's into the group is this distance here, between 53 and 70, which is 7, divided by the width of the whole group, which is um, 35, from 53 to 88, that's 35, that's the width of the group, times, okay, the width in terms of the values from 50 to 55, in terms of the interval, so that's, that's 5. So that's the proportion that this Q2 is along this line between 50 and 55 is the same proportion that this 60th term is in terms of these numbers underneath, in terms of the positions. Okay, so that will give you the value of Q2 by linear interpolation. So we're going to have 50 plus, and you're going to have 7 over 35, and that's multiplied by 5. Okay, so that will give you 51, exactly. So Q2 is 51. Okay, so that's the value of Q2. So we can say, therefore, Q2 is 51. There's the answer to part one. And then for part two, we've got to find the interquartile range. Um, in that case, we need, what, we need Q3. We need Q1 and Q3, because we know that the interquartile range for part two is equal to Q3 minus Q1. So we've we got to find Q3. So for Q3, we'll do a similar kind of situation. We'll say Q3. Let's first of all work out where it is, and then we can find out what its estimate is. So Q3 is going to be 3 quarters times 120. That's how far along it's going to be in the group. So that's going to give you uh, the 90th position. So we're going to look for the 90th position. The 90th position will be in this group over here. Okay, Q3 is going to be in that group over there. So we'll do a very similar thing for Q3 as we did for Q2. So we know we're looking for Q3, which is in the 90th position. 
okay which is going to be in the group 55 to 58 55 up to 58 it's going to be in that group okay the beginning of that group uh, we've got to the 88th term that's the 88th term by the beginning of the group by the end of the group we're going to be at the 112th term 88 plus 24 okay so that's the by the end of the group so we can say q3 is equal to 55 plus let me think about how deep into the group we are where we're two units into the group out of the width of the group as we said which is 24 times the width of the group in terms of the interval here which is three okay so that's how far we're into the group so we can say that's going to be given by q3 is going to be 55 plus 2 over 24 multiplied by 3 and that gives us 55.25 so that's q3 55.25 that's an estimate of the upper quartile so therefore the interquartile range is q3 minus q1 which is 55.25 minus q1 which we were given as 45 55.25 minus 45 so that's going to be 10.25 55.25 minus 45 uh, 45 that gives you 10.25 as I said so 10.25 is the interquartile range so there's the answer to that um, part two okay so this is the answer to part two. Oh, I started that up there all right so there we have the answer for that question um, C part one and two now for part D it says one measure of skewness is given by Q3 minus 2 times Q2 plus Q1 over Q3 minus Q1 by calculating this measure describe the skewness of these data. So first we need Q1 which we told is 45 and we need Q2 which we worked out is 51. Okay that's 45 that's 51 and then we have 55.25. So 45, 51 and Q3 as we worked out is 55.25. So if we use this formula, we have 55.25 minus 2 times 51 plus Q1, which is 45, over Q3 minus Q1, 55.25 minus 45. So that's going to give us, let's see what it gives us. Let's set it up here. We have 55.25 minus... 2 times 51 whoops 2 times 51 plus 45 divided by 55.25 minus 45 okay and that should give us minus 7 over 41 which is minus I'll just leave it as minus 7 over 41 Okay, we can round it to 3SF if you want to as well. That gives us minus 0 0.171. 0 0.171 to 3SF. Okay, so that's the skewness. And it says, uh, describe the skewness of this data. You can say it has negative skew. Okay, because that came out as negative, therefore we say negative skew. Okay, they ask us to do that by calculating that measure. And there we have the answer to this question. Question number one from this paper, October 2022. Pretty straightforward a question here, just using a bit of proportion and linear interpolation, which is also basically proportion. And then using a given um, formula to work out the skewness, stating what it is. And that's it. That's the answer. Okay, so that's uh, number one done. Other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this region over here. Other questions from this topic, which is to do with, I guess, histograms um, and linear interpolation and stuff, will be found in this playlist over there. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.